I was wrong. I thought I said everything I wanted to about the Colonel's bequest. Last year, I made an in-depth video about the obscure details in this 1989 mystery adventure. But, like Laura Bow and the bodies in the game, I just kept stumbling over things I wanted to share. So, here are five more Colonel's Bequest secrets you probably didn't know. Spoilers. There's almost no reason for this well to exist. There are no puzzles to solve and no items to retrieve. Even so, someone put a lot of thought and effort into this thing. If you look at the well, you get a generic description. But if you look in the well, you'll get this detailed close-up. I love the brickwork and the shadows on the rope. They even made a sprite for the bucket if you happen to turn the crank and then look into the well. Its only practical use is that there's a 50% chance of finding Gloria here. And when you do, there's another detail I love. If you let go of the crank by walking away, there's a big splash of water. If you let go of the empty bucket, you'll hear the splash, but you won't see it. And the splash won't happen at all if you gently lower either Gloria or the bucket. They actually thought about the relative speeds and sizes of the things dropping in. It even appears that there's code to prevent Gloria from showing up at the well when Clarence is wandering around this part of the island, presumably to prevent things like this from happening. I mean, he's enough of a grump already, no need to make him seem mildly annoyed at the sight of his deceased ex-girlfriend. A viewer named Red Metal mentioned something intriguing in the last video's comments. The fires in the fireplaces burn brightly at the beginning of the game, but are reduced to embers by later acts. There are three fireplaces, in the Colonel's room, in the library, and in the dining room. The Colonel's fireplace appears to stay the same, but the library and dining room fireplaces change every two acts, along with their descriptions. This seems like such an obvious thing in hindsight, but I've gotta be honest, I never noticed it before. The same viewer also mentioned an urban legend that said, if you smell the perfume in one of the secret passages, the odds of Laura being accosted by the killer increases. This is not true, but how the passages actually work is even more interesting. On every game cycle, the game checks whether you're in this rectangle. If you are, there's a 34% chance of grabbing. Because the code runs on every game cycle, you will get got if you stand there long enough. That is, with some restrictions. The killer can't attack in Act 1. I guess the devs wanted the violence to escalate slowly, even though you can die in the shower from the moment you start the game, but whatever. The killer also doesn't attack in Act 8, because at that point, she can't do much of anything. In Act 5, the killer won't attack in the West Secret Passage, presumably because from that passageway, you can spy on Lillian and the Colonel, and Lillian can't be in two places at once. In the same way, Death is disabled in the East Secret Passage during Act 6 because you can spy on Lillian writing in her diary. Both of those things happen upstairs, so what about the ground floor? The passage death script doesn't check which floor you're on, so the same rules apply equally upstairs and downstairs. That's because there are really only two passageway screens. The game checks your previous room to determine things like which painting is on the wall or which rooms you can spy into. The characters are named after silent film stars and other notable figures of the 1920s. One I missed was Lillian's inspiration. Happy Coding ZX and others pointed out that Lillian is likely named after Lillian Gish, but her looks and personality are more likely based on Louise Brooks. At the end of the game, you get a ranking based on how much you discover. It's like a grade on your detecting skills. To earn the highest ranking, the coveted super sleuth, you need to uncover all 76 entries in the notebook. It's really difficult to earn Super Sleuth without a guide. Many of the notebook entries are convoluted or marred by scripting bugs. These facts were obscured for decades, but we now know the truth because of Sluicebox. Sluicebox is a scum VM developer, and he combed through the code to figure it all out. 
I have him to thank for many of the technical details in a lot of my videos, like the passageway depths I talked about a moment ago. The last time I discussed Super Sleuth, I picked a few of my favorite facts, but to be honest, I think I undersold the amount of jank, partly because I wanted to avoid even more spoilers, and also because that video was already 50 minutes long. But I figure if you've stuck with it this far, a few more spoilers aren't going to hurt. So here are six more of my favorite Super Sleuth sections. One of the notebook entries is Took Object from Suitcase of Lillian. You don't earn it for taking any objects from Lillian's suitcase. Instead, you get credit by reading her diary, which was in the suitcase, or examining it with Wilbur's monocle. Get diary or take diary alone, don't do squat. There's a category called items requiring close scrutiny. For most of the items, you need to use Wilbur's monocle and examine them. Not so the cigar butt. To get that entry, you have to pick up the cigar butt from the secret passageway. You don't have to look at it or examine it with the monocle. Instead, you also have to look at either the Colonel's cigar or Clarence's cigar. If you look at Clarence's cigar in Acts 1 or 2, you're A-OK. -okay. But in Act 3 and Act 5, you're out of luck. The code that's supposed to give you notebook credit just isn't there. Thankfully, Colonel Henri's code works just fine, even in his old age, thank you very much. And because it's convenient, in the Super Sleuth speedrun, the very first command you type is look at butt. This alone makes it one of the greatest speedruns of all time. Also on the list of items requiring close scrutiny is the cognac decanter. It moves around a lot, which gives the impression that you need to look at it multiple times, but really, you only have to examine it with the monocle once, and it doesn't matter when. Since this is a murder mystery, it's not surprising that you get credit for finding the dead bodies. But when you leave the screen after finding a body, it disappears. As implausible as it sounds, the killer removes the bodies and dumps them down the laundry chute. You can find the pile later at the end of an underground passage. You'll earn notebook credit for the People Found Murdered entries if you find the body either in its original resting place or in this pile. That means you only have to find Wilbur, Clarence, and Lillian on their own because the first two have items you need and Lillian can't carry herself away. You don't have to go looking for the others, though avoiding the bodies makes for a very boring murder mystery and you definitely don't need to search every corpse, as some players assume. Speaking of this room, one of the notebook categories is found secret entrance slash exit in. The way it's listed, it seems like you need to go through each of these to get full credit. For instance, from the downstairs passageway behind the clock, you can exit north to the library or south to the billiard room. The notebook lists these separately, but to quote from Sluicebox, when you enter a hallway passage, you get credit for all its entrances and exits. So this list collapses to six actions. Enter the four passages, enter the garden staircase, and turn the basement crank. He also points out that it's a shame about that last one because there's a funny bug. Once you put the crank in the wall without turning it, you can just walk through the brick wall like a golden goddess. Almost all the notebook entries require, you know, doing something, but there is one major exception. To advance time in Act 1, you have to see Fifi kiss the Colonel. Because this is mandatory, the game doesn't bother tracking them for the category People Romantically Involved. It doesn't check anything. Ironically, there's another entry that should be automatic, but isn't. To advance the game in Act 3, you have to see Rudy and Fifi struggle in Fifi's room. But this isn't acknowledged in the People Who Struggle Physically category. Instead, to get Fifi's entry, you have to see Rudy and Fifi struggle in Rudy's room in Act 2. This isn't otherwise required and is easy to miss. To finish things off, let's look at Sluicebox's favorite bug. In Act 1, if you spy on Gloria and Rudy in the billiard room, you'll get four notebook entries. But if you spy on the empty billiard room, you'll get the exact same entries. So enter the room, leave, wait a minute or so before spying. I sure feel like a detective now.
And if you want to learn even more about the Colonel's Bequest, check out my original video for tons more hidden goodness. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, enjoy the spooky season, and I'll see you in the next one.